YouTube, how's it going? Errol here. I'm Chiefin and you're geeking with the Comic Chief. Today we are reviewing Jason Aaron's The Avengers issue number 701. Whosoever watches this channel, if he or she be worthy, shall acquire the knowledge from the Comic Chief. The issue is titled The Strength and Conviction of Philip Coulson. The cover art was drawn by Ed McGuinness and Marty Grasha and is on point as normal. However, let's talk about the interior art. The interior art was drawn by Mark Morales, Scott Hanna, and Carl Kessai, and it was different. It was definitely different. I'm not saying it sucks, but the art change is so drastic compared to the previous issues. It will take a while for me to get used to. Some of the panels, specifically the Thor and She-Hulk pages, just look funny to me. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to give this 0.75 stars. The writing, on the other hand, was stellar. Phil Coulson's writing is awesome and bleeding into the plot review. I think this is crucial to where this Avengers storyline seems to be headed. The suspense is killing me. Win and win. The character development was great for both Phil Coulson and Black Panther. I think this breather issue is definitely a win. At 399, I can dig it. So 4.75 stars out of 5. It's the art, man. Let's move on to the spoiler part of the review. Uh, the issue begins with the former Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. head director, Phil Coulson. So I've been out of the comic game for a while. Apparently Phil died. Was that in Civil War um, Two. Wait, I think, yeah, it was. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section below, please. Anyway, Phil is definitely a changed man, back from the dead. He feels like he was abandoned and lied to his whole life. He feels gullible for having collected vintage Captain America cards and up until the five seconds before he was murdered by Deadpool, he's blind to the truth. But I guess he came back a new man because he was a renewed strength uh, and he has a renewed conviction that will allow him to do what it takes to protect his country. So I don't know who he is talking to, but he has he's about to point the gun at someone and pull the trigger. We warp to Avengers Mountain where Robbie Reyes is doing some Steve Rogers assigned homework and Captain Marvel is tinkering with his hell charger. Apparently has a gateway to hell in the trunk. Either way, Captain America reminisces about the homework that she had to do when she first joined the Avengers, but reassures Robbie that it is essential to being the best that he can be. Also, that just because he saved the world from the final host doesn't mean he has a lot to learn and catch up on. Meanwhile in the Savage Land, Thor and Jennifer Walters are on their first date. While the art seems cartoony and out of place, I think the writing and dialogue between Thor and Jennifer are crucial. Some might say this is filler, but it is nice to see a love story in an Avengers title. Regardless, Jennifer seems underwhelmed and unsatisfied with her date. Back in Avengers Mountain in the Eden Room, a meeting put together by T'Challa is going on with Iron Man armor suits serving them. Shaman, Captain Britain, Sunfire, Navid, Sabra, the Arabian Knight, and Major Ursus are in attendance. T'Challa is attempting to create a support network similar to what the former S.H.I.E.L.D. agency was for the Avengers to act as backup and to help spread peace throughout the world. Everyone seems to be in concurrence and to come up with a plan to stop Namor who has claimed dominance over Earth's oceans. The biggest outspoken voice is from Ursus, who on behalf of Russia and the Winter Guard refuses to be a part of T'Challa's grand plan. He even brings a point that I was wondering myself, why were no superheroes from the United States present at the meeting? I'm all for Black Panther being the new leader, but I hope this doesn't start not a civil war, but a world war. So while Major Ursus is bringing up somewhat valid points, T'Challa just sits there and observes. We shift back to Thor and Jennifer Walters and she's at the point where she's going to teleport home. She seems to think that Thor isn't interested in her, but only in S.H.I.E.L.D. Flash to another page of Philip Coulson, gun in hand, pointing at whoever he's talking to and he has a card in his hand burning, one of those vintage Captain America cards. He truly believes that his life before death was a lie and that the people he once idolized were jerks and traitors, Tony and Steve respectively. He was hired by General Ross to and that whoever he had the gun pointed at was also hired by him. So now I really am wondering, who's he talking to? It also seems that he is an Avenger, so who could it be? It's not Tony, Steve, Thor, Jennifer, Robbie, or Carol, so I'm thinking it has to be Doctor Strange, but I really don't know. Uh, back at Black Panther's tea party, Ursus is now in full rage mode and starts sprinting across the table toward the still calm T'Challa, who orders him transported back to Siberia. Before any damage could be done, my favorite panel in the book is of Black Panther ordering four different Iron Man suits to clean up the mess. He had hoped the Crimson Dynamo would come instead of Ursus, but knew Red Widow sent Ursus instead because the Winter Guard had no intention about joining this alliance. So the immediate threats, Namor and the Atlantean people and new vampire insurgents in Romania, which by the way, Blade is currently in Avengers Tower recuperating. I can't wait. 
We learned that Namor attacked a rocks and oil drilling platform in Alaska, but were quickly defeated by an unknown party, which was no one in the room, the Winter Guard, or the Avengers. He truly didn't know. Back to Thor and Jennifer's date, Jennifer was uh, getting ready to teleport off, but Thor finally stops her and probably the greatest poetry and lovey-dovey stuff I've read in a comic book or anything long in a long time. Uh, Thor's dialogue is the best. Uh, so yeah. Uh, this ends up with Jennifer deciding to stay, kiss Thor, and ends up turning into She-Hulk. I love it. Black Panther's last words are telling his guests that he is unsure with everything that is going on, but is sure that a giant explosion is headed their way. He doesn't know what stopped Namor in Alaska, and he knows that something is going on in Washington, D.C. to plot against him and the Avengers, because they no longer view the Avengers as an ally of the United States. He's asking his guests to stand beside him. I really hope his stint as the chairperson of the Avengers isn't short-lived or a mistake. So we cut to Philip Coulson with a smoking gun. He just shot his prisoner in the leg. Whoever it is, works for Black Panther, is a spy for the Avengers, and was sent to infiltrate General Ross's team. I'm starting to think it's Hawkeye or Black Widow now. Who is it? Coulson reveals to the prisoner that the people responsible for defeating the defenders of the deep in Alaska were the Squadron Supreme of America. The final pages show the prisoner admitting he was stalling Coulson and saying he was going to kill him. But the lights go out and gunshots go off and a fight ensues but when they come back on we see a victorious Coulson standing over a man in a suit's body. Uh, his final words, God bless America. I, I just don't know if I like evil Coulson. I hope he's just brainwashed. I don't know. What do you think YouTube? Let me know in the comment section below. I got just a few more issues left and I'll be completely caught up with the Avengers. I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, that's all I got. Thanks for being here. Comic Clan, you're the best. This is Errol, the Comic Chief, going offline.